Good morning, folks. Doug Gardner here. Um, you know, I've got a lot of comments lately about the types of blinds that I use and why I use them, certain particular brands. Um, today, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to uh, share with you a little bit about the blinds that I use and why I use them. Uh, I'm out here today in an area where um, I had some blinds set up and they haven't been doing real well. So I'm going to move them and put out some different blinds in a, in a better location. So I uh, just thought we'd walk in here and I'd show you kind of what I've got set up and what I, um, with the blind I have currently out. And it's a beautiful cypress swamp. Um, it's got a great little creek that goes through the area. Um, there's the blind right here I have set up. And um, I, originally I was thinking that I'd have some white-tailed deer using this area and crossing the stream and get some good footage. I'm working on a documentary about white-tailed deer and climate change and kind of the different habitats. And this area is a floodplain off of the Pocatalgo Swamp. And this is the P Pocatalgo River. And it is almost completely... Um, fed by rainwater. I mean, the, the levels of water fluctuate depending on the amount of rain that we get in the area and north of here. So it doesn't take but a little bit of rain, a couple of inches, and this whole area out here becomes flooded about 18 inches deep. Um, you can actually see the wide buttresses on the cypress trees out here, which indicate that, um, you know, there is standing water here um, from time to time. So let's go over here and check out one of the blinds that I have. And we will show you what I like about certain blinds and what I dislike about them. Beautiful little sandy bottom stream. I haven't got the footage I want yet of some white tails crossing this. The other morning I was out here and uh, before daylight, I had two little bucks sparring in the creek, and I really wanted to get that, but I didn't because there was no light. Anyway, this is uh, one blind that I have, and this is your inexpensive pop-up blind, uh, ground blind. They're manufactured for, for deer hunting out of, and some of the pluses are they're inexpensive, uh, they're lightweight, they fold up fairly small, easy to set up, and we'll go around the other side. Let me get here so you can see. One of the things I dislike is the fact, the material. It's always a nylon material, and you can see with certain angles of light, um, you get a white sheen, which is, I mean, you pretty much have got a, a target on your head when you're out here. I mean, deer comes through here, they're immediately gonna see that. So that's one thing I dislike about it. Um, another thing I dislike is this is the door to it, this triangle right here. So let's widen out. The zipper is quite noisy. And this is the inside here. So, the, about the door, what I dislike for a 6'2 man, it is difficult to get into. So once you do get in here, um, the things that I do like about this blind is that when you sit down with this see-through mesh, it's a one-way mesh uh, camouflage net, so you're able to sit in here and 180 degrees see in every direction um you can see what's moving around you what's coming um, to you but the animal can't see you in the blind now the secret to not being seen in a blind and your movements um while you're in the blind is having the back of the blind blacked out it kills your shadow so they can't see you move. So that's one of the really nice things about this. Um, the number one thing that kills this blind for me, um, 
from a filming uh, aspect is these cross members. It's really well designed. However, for filming, it's horrible. It's a, it's a, it's a deal breaker for me because you can, there's nowhere to really get the lens out of the blind that you can turn any significant direction. So what I have to do on these kind of blinds is I actually have to take a knife and cut the corner open because this is the largest area that does not have a brace in it. I have to cut this open, then it wants to sag down. I put the lens out and I'm able to turn at least about 80 degrees right and left, which still is, is very um, restrictive to being able to move around. Also, now that I've got this big gap here, um, which I could cover it with camo material, but that's another thing I have to fight. Um, it, it shows up from outside the blind, it shows up as a big black hole. And uh, black and white are key things that animals key on. Uh, they key on contrast. Contrast stands out to the eye uh, faster than anything else. That and different types of pattern uh, designs. So this is some of the things I don't like about it. Also, I have to cut the bottom of the blind in order to get my third tripod leg out of the blind so that I can move the tripod far enough forward that the lens will actually get outside of the blind. So those are the things that make this a no-go for, for video. I put it up here because it was kind of a quick thing. Um, I needed somewhere to sit and my other blinds were out in other locations. So, but I've decided after sitting here for about 40 hours over a five day period, um, I just have not seen enough activity to warrant keeping this blind in here and actually staying in this particular location. Now it's been great for raccoons um, and otters. Otters swim up and down the stream constantly but that's not really what I'm going after. If I get to the point that I need otter footage and raccoon footage, then I will come back here, uh, reset a different blind and specifically set up for that. Maybe even get down, put the blind in the shallow creek um, so that I can be eye level to otters as they're swimming up and down or catching fish or that kind of thing. The other thing too is being down low to the water, uh, the raccoons always um, hunt and fish along the edge of the water, so they're low, they're low to the water as well. So you always want to be eye level to your subject, or as close to eye level as you can. You don't want to shoot down on them. That's the last thing you want to do. Um, but anyway, so that is this blind um, in a nutshell. What things I like about it, things I dislike. Um, I'm, I'm going to show you. We're going to go to another location that I'm going to reset up at. Um, I'm going to put another blind out that I had custom built years ago. Um, and it works for both photography as well as video cameras. Um, now one thing I will say in this particular blind, if you're just shooting photographs, uh, and especially if you're hand holding your camera and you don't need a tripod, this is an excellent option for you, um, uh, because you can, you know, ease your camera out of this whole um any of the small holes that are already designed in this like this little zipper window here you can get the camera out pretty easy and pretty quietly um but for video it the equipment is so big so heavy so cumbersome that it's impossible to pull it out and move it to another window by that time you've made all kind of noise and movement and your subject's gone so uh, for video this is a no-go for still photography is great um, and it's a cheap option I say cheap everything's relative right so this is kind of the new design everybody's going to this X brace type blind because it pops up pretty easy and it's pretty roomy it's actually very roomy um, and they run you can get them as cheap as a hundred bucks and as expensive as 250 bucks I think so I think this one came off of Amazon for around 100, 120 bucks. So anyway, let's go and uh, I'll tear this blind down and we will move to another location. Okay guys, we are We've moved to a new location about a mile downstream from where I was before. Um, same swamp, 
and uh, trying to find a good location to put out a blind. I'm gonna show y'all kind of what I look for and uh, what, what are the determining factors for where I'm gonna put a blind. So let me put this blind down. All right. So again, this is uh, all this is a big bald cypress swamp. It's got some Tupelo gum in it. And, uh, and then up on the, the ridge behind me, there's a nice oak ridge, lots of, of uh, oak trees. I noticed coming in, there were tons and tons of acorns, which is a great sign because white-tailed deer love to eat on acorns, among other things. But that is a, that's a really good food source. So um, that puts me kind of in a good area. Food, cover, water. Um, are the keys to finding a good location. So anyway, this is uh, what we got. I'll turn the camera around and show you. Again, the swamp is dry right now. Uh, we hadn't had any rainfall for a few weeks, um, but normally all of this is covered in about 18 inches to two feet of water. As a matter of fact, if you come up here, you can see the, the water line. Usually it's right there is the water line. So, um, this is actually really good because some of the things I'm trying to film, I'm trying to film the effects of climate change on white-tailed deer and their habitat. And this is one of their prime habitats. So <clears throat> one of the things that we've been noticing um, is bigger swings and uh, I guess swings of extremes in, in weather patterns. So we'll get more flooding for a longer period of time um, in the spring and in the late summer generally and then we'll also go for, for periods uh, longer periods of time of extended drought wildfires that kind of thing so you get an area like this with all the you can hear the crunchy leaves all these all this fuel on the ground uh, wildfire will come through here and and kind of make a mess of things and completely change the habitat. So as you can see, it's just a, it's really a beautiful place. Now I'm here in the middle of the day, so the light's harsh and it's not as pretty as uh, the video doesn't do it justice. But anyway, let me show you what we're, lo what we're looking for now. So when I come into a new area, I'm trying to set up a, a shooting area. Again, some of the things I'm looking for is food, water, shelter. Um, we've already established there's plenty of food in here. Um, there's plenty of water because the stream that you just saw me on actually comes right down here beside not even a hundred yards from where the blind is. So they got plenty of water. And then obviously there's plenty of cover in this thick swamp. So now I want to look for signs that will show me kind of the direction of movement. So, um, for the sake of, of time and, um, I've gone ahead and kind of walked this area and basically what you do is you kind of walk a, a whole circle around this area and you look at all the different angles and you're looking at camera angles where you know open areas that you can see the most amount of property from also you're looking for a sign of where the deer are walking um, any other sign of, of deer behavior so we're in the middle of the rut right now so we should be able to find some scrapes some rubs um, just tracks um, if they're using one particular path to traverse through the swamp to a feeding area there should be some well-worn trails so um, i will show you some of the sign that i just found so like most animals deer like to travel the path of least resistance um, the easier travel is for any animal um, you know that's the the least amount of effort they have to um, to put out. So when you're an animal trying to find food, you always want to um, save as much energy as possible. So you're going to travel the, the easiest route. And so as I was looking around through here, you can see it's kind of a natural corridor. See how thick everything else is? So if you look around here, this kind of got my attention, this natural corridor that goes through here. And, um, and as I started walking and looking, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there's a pretty worn path right here. And it goes right on through. I mean, they've almost got it muddy right here. And it goes all the way up through here. You can still see it right here. Lots of tracks. 
and then it kind of goes up but it also splits off and goes this way so let's see what what's over here there's a lot of a lot of tracks with the leaves it's very difficult to see all the tracks but this is really eating up with tracks tracks here tracks are getting really heavy right in here and then you get here and it's pretty obvious lots of tracks all all this this little bottom it looks like it's been holding water so um there's a lot of tracks in here so this is pretty good there's an old tram road here you can see how it's elevated also it's much greener up there than anywhere else and these tram roads um you'll find them in a lot of swamps years many many years ago a lot of these swamps were logged much like this one uh, back in the 40s and 50s i think it was anyway these tram roads are built so heavy equipment can actually get on dry ground and go through um, to access areas to cut so now that they don't use those anymore um, a lot of these tram roads are uh, have brakes cut in them like this area right here you see there's a big break and it starts back over here that way the swamp is allowed to flow naturally and um, everything kind of reverts back to its natural state so with that said um, it looks like based on the tracks i'm seeing and these trails it looks like they're following these tram roads um, throughout the swamp and then where these breaks where there's a break in the tram road they're getting off and kind of fanning out in both directions of the swamp so this is almost like a convergence area which is a great great thing um, and if i can set up a good blind location right here i think i think we'll have much better success than we did before the other thing too is all the tracks are kind of going in the direction of this oak ridge that i was telling you about where there's all the acorns at so it's a food source up there all right well let's um let's pop up a blind today i'm actually putting up my favorite blind it's a blind that i had uh custom built years ago based on all the things that i find wrong with other blinds and uh and things i kind of wish i had in a blind and so there's a guy up in michigan i don't remember his name but the name of his business is lucky's uh lucky's hunting and he custom builds anything and everything you want now it's a little pricey but um i've got everything in a blind that i actually want so i'm gonna pop up a blind in this general area so i can see these tram roads i can see all the open area in front of me i have a maximum amount of open areas to actually see the deer kind of traversing through the swamp so i'm gonna pop up a blind and then i'll show you all about it Okay, here's my lucky blind. Now, I'm not done setting it up yet. This is just it in its raw form. I will brush it in and uh, get everything tweaked on it. But uh, just kind of doing a walk around. The design is based on, I guess the structure, the inside structure of the design is based on uh, Leonard Rue's old design. He called it the Rue blind. And uh, he had a really great design. And to be honest with you, Nobody has really beaten that design over the years. He was kind of, if you don't know who Leonard Rue was, he's the godfather of nature photography. Uh, I think he, unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago. Um, but anyway, so it's based on his blind, and I just modified it to make it uh, more suitable for what I do. So uh, if we come in close, number one, um, I use a heavy matte finish Kodura material. Um, it kind of helps with some insulation in the wintertime. It's thick enough and heavy enough that it doesn't um, flap in the wind. And I also like the camo pattern. Um, there's a lot of gray in it, um, kind of with a little bit of blotchy green. It's not your traditional camouflage pattern, but for me, I think once you brush it in, it looks a lot better out here. You see, you got a lot of trees that are various shades of gray, um, like this, and then you know, these trees out here are a little bit lighter gray, and, and so it varies from light to dark. Um, so the changes I made on the outside of the blind, first and foremost, um, I've got these tabs all the way around the top. I can tie strings to, anchor it down if I'm in a windy situation. 
Um, it helps hold it in place. And then, so this window right here is for video camera. Um, so the nice thing about this, this whole window is Velcro all the way around and I can close it completely up or I can just open various parts of it. So generally what I do is I leave the top open like this as a window to see out of. And then I have a little piece of camo net like this stuff right here um, that's, that goes on the inside so I can see through but the animal can't see me moving. And then the bottom, I also, I can change the size of this opening. I can make it as wide as I want or close it down. So that way I can have the camera lens sticking out right here and then seal this up all the way around it. Um, <clears throat> so that works real well. For photography purposes, let me get my shadow out. Um, if you wanted to do still photography, they've got a nice uh, snoot made out of a very soft material that doesn't move and rustle when you move the lens around. This bungee cord cinches down around the end of the lens so you can move quietly and they can't see your hands moving. When I'm not using it, I just tuck it in. Um, all the way around the top, uh, right at eye level when I'm sitting in the chair, I have these windows, these uh, one-way uh, mesh windows, which can be completely closed up from the inside and blacked out. And I don't know if you can see in here, but all the material has black backing to it, black waterproof backing. So the blind is 100% waterproof. If I get in a heavy downpour, I don't get wet. But the black back, like I was telling you earlier, kills your shadow movement. So if the animal does see you through here, they can't see your shadow moving against the background. Whereas if you had backlight coming through, they would easily be able to see any little movements you make. So if we come on around, uh, also I have these little um, strings sewn into the material and they're everywhere, they're all over it. So what we use to do this is we'll take brush, and I'm just using the stick for an example, you lay it on top here and you just tie it on and it easily ties and unties. And that way all your brush is, is now strapped to the blind, it doesn't fall over and uh, that works really well. So let me open it up and show you the inside. All right, so I have a vertical zipper. Comes from the bottom all the way to the top. And because it's on a pivoting point up here, the blind can open all the way up and I can easily, I can just walk right in. Um, I don't have to crouch down to my knees to get in the blind. Uh, so this is what the inside looks like. Again, these flaps go up. And, um, you know, if I can seal off the whole inside of the blind completely. Um, can seal the front off completely with the Velcro and accessory pockets all throughout so that I can put, you know, batteries, whatever, snacks, whatever I need to, to keep without putting them on the ground. And then on every side of the blind, there is a Velcro strip right here. And I don't know if I can do this one handed. Anyway, you get the point. You open this Velcro and the flap comes open and you can put a tripod leg completely out, um, allowing you to get the camera right up to the edge of the blind. That's one of the big problems with other blinds. The other thing is that um, if I wanna shoot ground level, I can now open these flaps, put the camera on the ground and shoot um, ground level to my subject. So that is it in a nutshell. That's a little bit about the blind. And again, um, this is designed by me, but I had luckyshuntingblinds.com uh, make it for me. And I'll give you a link in the description to, um, to his business. Um, this is my favorite blind out of everything I've, I've ever built. And I've built lots of blinds. Uh, so this one seems to work pretty good for me. Um, another thing, when you are setting up blinds, especially in a heavily forested area like this, and you're trying to maximize, maximize the coverage um, so you can see as much as you can possibly see from one location. Again, when you're in the blind, it's very, very hard to move a tripod, to move a camera to the other side of the blind. So you want to be able to swing as far as you can, you know, can actually swing and actually have open shooting lanes. So as you stand here, before you put the blind up, just take your time, walk the whole area, and kind of look back towards 
the area you think the, the animal is going to be traveling and look for those openings that you can get the most amount of clear shooting lanes. Now, one key thing, don't put your blind right up on top of where they're going to be moving through. I've decided to move off about 50 yards because the shot that I want, I don't want solely tight shots of white-tailed deer. What I'm more interested in is the wider shots and mid shots of deer moving through their environment, which is the big cypress swamp. And so I want to see the cypress knees on the ground. I want to see the buttresses of the cypress trees. In some instances, I'm going to widen out, get the canopy and all that kind of good stuff. So I, I don't want to be right on top of them. If you're right on top of where they normally travel, they're going to bust you. Their, their nose, their eyes, and their hearing is uh, unbelievable. And you, you know, if you bust them, or they bust you rather, um, then you might as well pack everything up and go home. And they, every time you do bust them, they, um, they, they get educated. And so they know tomorrow when you come back in here, hmm, something was, we had a negative uh, experience when we came through here earlier, so we're gonna go a different route. So don't always crowd the animal. Give it plenty of room to act natural. And if, by doing that, you'll actually have a lot more success. So now I'm gonna go ahead and brush in the blind, finish thing up, uh, everything up and check my shooting lanes um, and get this ready to go. And then I'm gonna let it sit for about a week. I'm not gonna come in here for a week, let the animals get used to it, let them get used to new smells, that kind of thing. And um, we'll see what happens. Okay, once you think you've got it brushed in um, so that it's, the blind itself is not obvious, and believe me, a, you would think a camouflage material blind would be enough, but it's not. Just imagine a car in a parking lot. If you've got a big parking lot with only a few cars in it and you park a yellow car in the middle of it, it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb. However, if you've got lots of cars around it, it blends right in and you hardly even notice the yellow. So same with the blinds. Um, it's not enough just to have a blind. In most cases, especially when you're talking about the animals that have good sense of smell and hearing and great eyesight, it's just not enough. So when you get finished with your blind, back up and take a look at it and see if it kind of blends in. Now, we've got a lot of green here. Within a few days, this is all gonna start dying and wilting and it should look like the rest of this area. And we still have a little bit of green in the background up on the higher ground. So I think it'll blend pretty good. The, um, the key thing though, to check to see what it looks like from a deer, don't look at it from six feet, two inches high. Kneel down and see what it looks like. So that looks pretty darn good. Now for the ultimate test, let's back up to the area we think the deer are actually going to walk in on and see what it looks like to them from a distance. Okay, so I've backed up about 40 or 50 yards and I'm on the trail where I think they're gonna come in and there's the blind right back there. So yeah, yeah, I think it's gonna work pretty good, especially in a few days when things start to wilt, it's gonna blend right in. This video has gotten a lot longer than I anticipated. Uh, I keep coming up with things that I remember at the last minute that uh, can make all the difference in the world. So as I was walking back up to the blind, you'll notice that you're probably going, well, Doug, why did you, you, put, blind, you put vegetation on the blind? We get that. But why did you put vegetation all out here around it, away from the blind? Again, going back to the um, example I gave you with the yellow car in the parking lot. So if I just had a blind just sitting up here, no matter how much vegetation, if I completely covered it so you couldn't even see the blind, that lump of vegetation is gonna stick out different than these areas back in here. So this vegetation, all this vegetation came from the surrounding area. So all of this is naturally here. The deer are naturally accustomed to seeing it. So I brought some vegetation and stuck it out kind of around it to kind of help the whole thing blend into the scene.
that way it looks more natural. All right, so we only have a couple more things we need to do. One of the most critical things that I do when I'm setting up um, for a new location is the best piece of equipment that I have. It is a small, inexpensive trail camera. Um, it's used for hunting and a variety of other things. And I've set it up right here on the game trail. It comes right through this swamp back toward my blind right there. And so the benefit of the trail camera is to give you information all the time. Even when you're not in the blind, you know exactly what's going on. The trail cameras that I use are multi trail cameras. I've had every trail camera that's manufactured and I just get so much better service and reliability out of the Moultries. Um, the one great thing is that when you have a technical problem with a camera and you will have technical problems with these cameras uh, from time to time, they aren't 100% perfect. Um, there's a lot going on in this little box. Um, you can call Moultrie and their customer service is in just unbelievable. Um, I mean, they just a good old boy in, uh, in the Midwest that gets on the phone with you and he's like, what can I help you with? And by the time you get off the phone, they've either solved your problem or you've got a new camera on the way. Um, they're just, just great, great people and their products are really good. Um, this is the Moultrie Edge. This is the newest one out. Um, uh, I've had like I say, every model I believe they've ever had. But the key point to this is if you're gonna go with these, the, the technology has gotten so much smaller and so much cheaper now that um, it's really a kind of a no-brainer. Um, these are like 89 bucks and they're cellular. So you want the one with the antenna and what it allows you to do is when it, when it detects motion, uh, it takes a picture or video and then it sends it directly to your phone instantly. Um, so you know right then what's going on 24-7. When I'm not in the blind, um, I got notifications turned on on my phone. I hear a little chime, open my phone. Oh, there's raccoons there. Oh, there's a bear there. Oh, there's deer there. Whatever. Oh, somebody's stealing my camera or my blind. And that does happen. That's another reason that I use these things. Um, the thing about the cellular, the cellular cameras, let's say it does get stolen. And that does happen from time to time. It's got, a, it's got a GPS tracker built into it. So even if they steal it, they walk up, it sends a picture, the picture's already sent to your phone. So it doesn't matter if they destroy the camera or steal it or whatever, you've already got a picture of them. Um, and hopefully you can identify them from that. The other thing is they cannot destroy, they cannot turn off the GPS tracker on the inside of the, the camera without completely destroying the camera. So if they're trying to find, you know, um, disable it so it can't be tracked back to them, they've got to destroy the camera so it's not gonna be good to them anyway. So um, anyway, very inexpensive for what they do. Um, it has just been um, a great tool for what I do. I have multiple cameras out all over the place, all over the United States, as a matter of fact. And um, the, the heck, you have to buy a service plan and they're really cheap. It, it ranges from $5 a month to I think $29 a month for uh, the unlimited package. But anyway, this will tell me um, for the next week, I'm going to let this area sit. I'm not going to come back in here. Let the, the deer get used to the blind and the area. Uh, see if I can get some pictures of what's moving, how they're moving, when they're moving. And, um, and then we'll come back and see what happens. But I got one more thing I want to show you. And uh, back over at the blind. So you hear me walking through these fall leaves. Very, very noisy. And if you're coming into the blind early in the morning in the dark, uh, you're making a lot of racket. I don't care how quiet you try to be. These crunchy leaves are, are terrible. And unless you've got a good rain to soften up the leaves, um, you're, gonna, um, you're gonna wake everything in the forest up and they're gonna know you're coming a mile away. So what I do is I actually take a rake and I rake a path to my blind. Now in this situation, I've got a few hundred yards to go. So it's, it's going to take me a while to, to rake all this. It doesn't have to be a big path, only big enough for you to walk in silently. As you hear, I'm actually walking pretty quiet right now. So just listen. That's a lot quieter than this. So here's a little, this is kind of what it looks like. And 
And I just make me a nice quiet path to slip in here right up to the back of the blind. I also take the rake and I rake out all the leaves and stuff on the inside of the blind because when you're sitting in there and you need to move around or something's in front of you, you need to reposition a little bit, your feet aren't rustling leaves. So another key point. All right, guys. Well, that's all I've got for today. Sorry the video went so long. Sorry it's so kind of ghetto looking uh, shaky. On an, I'm just doing this on an iPhone. I was out here messing around, putting up, uh, moving a blind, and I said, you know what? People have been asking about this, so I'm going to put a little video out. So here you go. Um, I appreciate all your support, and uh, we're going to let this rest a few days, and we'll come back in. And uh, if I get some good video from this setup, I'll be glad to share it with you. All right. Have a great day.